All right, this time, we're not learning something completely new. We're actually combining everything we've already covered. Geometry reader, overlays, transitions, enums, and even how to pass actions. If you followed the earlier tutorials, now it's time to put it all together. We're building a fully reusable drop-down menu, the kind you can plug into any app with custom icons, dynamic size, and flexible alignment. This is our basic option model. Each drop-down item will be an instance of drop-down option. It has a title, which is the text you'll see, a color, which controls the text color, an optional icon for small system images next to the text, and an action, which runs when you tap the option. This enum controls where the drop-down appears. You can choose leading, center, or trailing, and that's how we'll align the whole drop-down on screen. This makes the menu super reusable. You can use it on the left, right, or center just by changing one value. Let's start with the icon. This is the symbol we'll show in the drop-down button. Right now, it's set to ellipsis by default, but you can change it to anything you want. What is expanded is what controls whether the drop-down is open or closed. We toggle this when the user taps the button. We'll also use this to control transitions and visibility. The menu width is used to store the width of the drop-down button. We use Geometry Reader to measure it and make sure the drop-down matches it exactly. That way, the menu stays clean and aligned no matter what device or text size. Drop-down alignment lets us control where the drop-down appears, left, center, or right. And we use that value to compute frame alignment, which tells SwiftUI exactly how to align the drop-down in the layout. And with Show Icon, you control whether it even shows at all. Set it to false if you want just the text. This part controls the direction and anchor point for the drop-down animation. If from top is true, the menu opens downward from the top. If it's false, the menu drops from under the button like a classic drop-down. We also combine it with the alignment to calculate a transition anchor. This controls where the menu expands from when it appears or disappears. Last, we have the options array. This holds all the choices you'll show in the drop-down using the model we defined earlier. Now that everything is set up, we're ready to build the actual drop-down view. We'll use all these values, alignment, direction, and sizing to render it cleanly and responsively. We're placing the button inside a Z-Stack. This gives us the flexibility to layer the drop-down on top or below this later. The button uses a simple system icon by default. It's ellipsis. And we style it with a circular background and a soft shadow to give it a floating look. This is the main trigger. Tapping it toggles I expanded, which controls whether the drop down is visible or not. Here's how we attach the drop down to the button visually. We're using overlay to place the drop down either above or below the trigger. From top controls the direction. If it's true, the menu appears above the button. If it's false, it drops down from the bottom, like a traditional drop down by changing the alignment inside overlay. We tell Swift UI exactly where to insert the drop down relative to the button. This is where we show the actual menu options. We loop through each one in the options array and display them in a vertical stack. Each row is an H stack with optional icons and a text label. If show icon is true and the option has an icon, we show it. Otherwise, it's just the text. We give each row some vertical padding for spacing and apply the color that was passed into the option itself. Each row has on tap gesture. When you tap an option, it runs the action attached to that item, then smoothly closes the dropdown using with animation. We wrap the entire dropdown in a rounded rectangle background. We use a fill color called BG, which you can define to match your theme. And we add a subtle shadow to give it a soft floating look. This gives the dropdown a modern lightweight feel and helps it stand out visually without being too heavy. We're adding a small vertical offset here. This doesn't control the animation. It just pushes the drop down slightly away from the button. If from top is true, we move it up by 50 points. If it's false, we move it down by 50 points. This gives the drop down a little bit of space, so it's not stuck right on top of the icon. It just looks better, clean, and visually separated. We're using fix size here to make sure the dropdown takes exactly the space it needs to show everything inside. Without this, SwiftUI might try to compress the layout, and if there's not enough room, it could cut off the text. 
This transition gives our drop down a clean, smooth entrance. We're combining scale, opacity, and a slight vertical offset. Scale zero makes it grow from nothing. We control where it grows from using transition anchor, so it opens in the right direction, depending on the alignment. Opacity fades it in, and the offset Y40 makes it slide upward into place just a bit. Together, they create a lightweight modern animation that feels natural. Here, we're using a background geometry reader to measure the actual width of the dropdown once it appears. We use color dot clear so it doesn't affect the layout visually. Then, inside on appear, we store the width in our menu width variable. We use that value to control the size of the button above, so the dropdown and the trigger button always match up in width. If we don't measure the dropdown's width, we don't know how big it is. So when it opens near the edge of the screen, like on the right, it might get cut off and show only part of the content. I'd really love to hear your feedback. It helps me improve and make the next videos even better. And if you have any ideas or topics you want to see next, feel free to drop your suggestions. Thanks for watching.